Welcome everyone to this special lecture and a especially warm welcome to uh, His Excellency Vladimir Novorov of the, the Secretary General of the uh, SCO. Uh, this is a very, we are very honored that you have taken time from your busy schedule to share your thoughts with us this afternoon. Um, when I think of the SCO, it immediately comes to mind that the the old divisions, the conventional divisions of Eurasia into Europe, Middle East, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and Northeast Asia are obsolete. In practice, events have broken them down. And this is a new form of globalization that we have not quite in this part of the world at least been accustomed to think of. In other words, instead of thinking of the conventional geographical divisions, we should think now in terms of Eurasia. Um, Central Asia, Eurasia is the heartland of which the great geopolitical strategist Mackinder describes as the geographical pivot of history. And this I think will be increasingly true, driven by events and by uh, institutions uh, like the SEO. However, although ASEAN and the FCO have had a very long history actually of contacts, uh, going back to practically just a year after the FCO was, was formed when a special representative of the Russian Fed Federation to SEO visited the ASEAN Secretariat. And since then, of course, ASEAN Sec Secretary Generals have visited the FCO and vice versa. And we have even sent, uh, signed a MOU between the two secretariats. But despite all these contacts, these are really among a, a relatively small group of officials. And although the SCO is the premier and the only actually Eurasian organization, uh, we still do not know enough about it in this region, meaning Southeast Asia. So we are privileged to be able to hear His Excellency Vladimir Norov this afternoon. Uh, he has had a very distinguished career, both in the service of the Uzbe Uzbekistan, and now has a broader canvas, broader diplomatic and political canvas as Secretary General of SEO. So welcome once again, Your Excellency, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, Dear Mr. Bilahari Kao Sikha, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure. Uh, and I am pleased to welcome the participants in the conference, ASIO Shaping Eurasia. First of all, I would like to express my deep gratitude to the National University of Singapore and personally to Mr. Kao Sikha for organizing today's event. Our meeting is dedicated to the place and the role of Shanghai Cooperation Organization in shaping the modern architecture of security and sustainable develop development in Eurasia. And this topic has been chosen for discussion as an appropriate one. The COVID-19 uh, pandemic has clearly revealed the interconnectivity and interdependence of the modern world and put the issue of improving the mechanism of multilateral cooperation at the global and regional levels on the international agenda. At the same time, this is not only a matter of traditional interstate cooperation, but also of strengthening coordination between leading regional association, which undoubtedly include the ASEAN, ASEAN and you are right that we concluded MAU with the ASEAN, SEO and ASEAN. We last year in the meeting uh, with the Secretary General of ASEAN in the Jakarta, we adopted the plan of common action. In order to present a more comprehensive image of our organization and its co contribution to the modern world order, uh, to our inter, uh, estimate audience, I would like to take a brief historical excursion into the recent past. The creation of the SEO was above all 
a result of profound changes in the international political landscape to, uh, due to the collapse of the bipolar system, as well as the emergence of the newly independent state in the center of Euro-Asia. Accordingly, there was a need to build a qualitatively new system of interstate communication based not on ideological confrontation, but on the principles of equality of states, mutual and respect for trust between them. The establishment of the SEO was preceded by the formalization of the Shanghai Five in April 1996, which was the participation of Kazakhstan, China, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, and Tajikistan, which had concluded agreements on confidence building in the military sphere and mutual reduction of armed forces in the common border area. Following Uzbekistan accession to this format, the declaration on the establishment of the ACO was adopted in June 2001 in the city of Shanghai, which stated that cooperation between the states within framework of the new organization would contribute to a more effective joint use of emerging opportunities and to countering new challenges and threats in the dynamic development of political multipolarity, economic and information globalization in 21st century. The principles of mutual respect for the sovereignty, independence, territorial integrity of states and inviolability of state borders, non-aggression, non-interference in internal affairs, non-use of force or threat of uh, using of force in international relations, renunciation of unilateral military superiority in the adjacent areas have formed the basis of ACO activities. Furthermore, it was clearly stated that the organization activity is not directed against third countries and international organization. On the contrary, it was prepared to develop dialogue, contacts, and cooperation within, with them in the all forms. The SEO is not a political and military bloc. There are no supranational structures within the organization, and all decisions are made on the basis of consensus. The concept of the Shanghai spirit, the main content of which is mutual trust, mutual benefit, equality, mutual consultation, respect for cultural diversity and striving for joint development has made SEO particularly attractive. Today, 90 years later, we can confidently say that in such a short period of time, by historical standards, the SEO has successfully built up and acquired a worthy place in the modern system of international relations. An extensive legal and regulatory framework has been developed within the organization, the uh, counter stones of which are the SEO Charter and the Treaty on Long-Term Good Neighbor uh, Linus Friendship and Cooperation. On the whole, uh, more than 1,000 agreements and regulatory documents uh, regulate the multifaceted interaction between the member states. The practical orientation of the SEO activities was largely determined by the signing of the Convention on Combating Terrorism, Separatism, and Extremism three months before the tragic events of September 11, 2001 in New York. The adoption of this document demonstrated that the SEO founding states were already clearly clearly aware of the growing threats to international security and stability and embarked on the path of uncompromising fight against them. Today, a solid package of documents regulating various aspects of the ACO countries, counterterrorism activities has been formed. The last important step in this area was the adoption in 2017 of the ACO Convention on Combating Extremism, which is universal in nature and open for accession by any interested countries. 
in order to uh, coordinate joint work on the counterterrorism track, the Asia Regional Counterterrorism uh, Structure was established, which is located in Tashkent. The work of this institution has already earned the highest marks from relevant international structures, including the UN Security Council, Counterterrorism Committee, Executive Directorate, the UN Office for Counterterrorism, and Interpol. Another important area of cooperation within the organization is the fight against drug trafficking, the three-level consultative mechanism of the competent authorities of the ACO member states implement the ACO anti-drug strategy adopted in 2018 and the program of action for its implementation. Thanks to the joint work of our anti-drug agencies, up to 40% of the opium group drugs intercepted throughout Euro-Asia are withdrawn from illicit trafficking by our countries. The special emphasis on combating these challenges is primarily dedicated by the complex military, political, and criminal situation in Afghanistan, located on the outer perimeter of the Asia space. Afghanistan is at the same time observer state of our organization. I would like to know that the, even in the conditions of the current pandemic, the member states of the organization continue to provide all possible assistance to the political settlement and this country. We believe that this process is one of the most important factors in strengthening security and stability throughout the ACO region and will give a new impetus uh, to the multifaceted interaction of our countries with Afghanistan. In this regard, we welcome the launch of inclusive inter-Afghan negotiation in Qatari capital Doha and express our hope for their progressive development taking into account the interests of all social, political, ethnic, confessional groups of the country in the interest of its peaceful reconstruction and sustainable development. We stress the non-alternative solution to the inter-Afghan conflict through political dialogue and inclusive Afghan-led and Afghan-owned peace process. At this last meeting of the Council of the Asia Foreign Ministers, on September 10 this year in Moscow, their readiness for joint work through the ACO Afghanistan Contact Group and the implementation of ACO Afghanistan Contact Group roadmap for further action was confirmed. The main emphasis uh, in, in, in uh, implementing this document will be on strengthening contribution which official, uh, Kabul, with official Kabul in counter-terrorism activities, combating illicit drug production and smuggling and illegal migration, rebuilding the Afghan economy and developing cultural and humanitarian ties. An important event in the history of the ACO was the accession of India and Pakistan to its ranks in 2017, which made the organization transcontinental. Today, almost Half of the world's population lives in Asia region, and about a quarter of world GDP is produced. At the same time, Asia area covers 60% of Euro-Asian territory. These figures more than convincingly reflect the huge potential of the Asia, the implementation of which is becoming a priority issue on its current agenda. The Asia, while continuing to address common political and security challenges to look for the best mechanism to expand economic ties and deepen cultural and humanitarian contacts is gradually developing primarily as a partnership type organization. In general, the experience of the ACO can be considered the first experience in the history of building a truly equal partnership of equilibrium multi-scale states with different economic and political potential, cultural and civilization characteristics. The Asian member states form the core of the Euro-Asian continent and their relation and interaction will determine the future development 
of this vast territory for years to come, taking into account the format of communication built within the ACO, joint developments and existing agreements, the organization is the largest, both in terms of territory and population, and uh, therefore the key Eurasian platform for international cooperation. The ACO has found itself at the center of large-scale economic in initiatives, which according to experts will be of central importance in determining the future development paths of Eurasia. The idea of interfacing or bridging efforts to implement this large-scale initiative is being widely discussed today. It is in the institutional specifics of the ACO that is its unique role in Eurasia space may lie. In, the, in these connections, the inclusion of India and Pakistan suggests a way forward for the organization. At present, in addition to the eight member states, the ACO has four observers, Afghanistan, Belarus, Iran, and Mongolia, six dialogue partners, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Cambodia, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Turkey, and uh, 10 countries applying today for observer and dialogue partner states like Bangladesh, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Egypt, Israel, uh, Maldives, Ukraine, Iraq, Vietnam, Bahrain, United Arab Emirates, Qatar, and others. In other words, one way or another, almost three dozen Euro-Asian countries are already in the Asia orbit. There is a common understanding within the organization that joint work in the area of ensuring regional security and stability must be supported by the active development of trade and economic ties. In this regard, the ACO has become a promising format for docking national development strategies, cross-border projects, and multilateral integration initiatives. In particular, one such project is the One Belt, One Road Initiative, uh, made by the President of uh, China, Mr. Xi Jinping, which provides for the creation of a transcontinental trade and transport infrastructure within the framework of the economic belt of Silk Road and 21st century Silk Road projects. Their geographical area covers not only the Asia space, but also Southeast Asia and the Middle East with the subsequent prospect of entering European markets via land and sea corridors along the Euro-Asian continent. The concept of great Euro-Asian partnership put forward by Russian President Vladimir Putin in 2015, which implies joint development in line with the integration of integration, flexible and close interconnection of networks of free trade zones, parallel developing inter-regional trade and economic alliances and multilateral integration process, including the involvement of partners from ASEAN and the European Union also deserves much attention. Another promising project that shows the defining role of the ACO space is the North-South International Transport Corridor uh, created to attract transit uh, freight flows from India, Iran, and other Gulf countries to Northern and Western Europe. In the same context, we should consider projects aimed at ensuring the logistical connectivity of the Central Asian region with the Afghanistan, which could not only contribute to a more dynamic recovery of the Afghan economy, but also provide direct access for land countries to sea ports in South Asia. The successful integration of the economies and integration capabilities of our uh, economic and integration capabilities of our countries is an important contribution to the implementation of the priority objects of improving the well being and living standards of the population in the framework of the UN Sustainable Development Goals until 2030. In this regard, at the last meeting of the ACO Councils of Heads of Government in November last year in Tashkent, it was agreed to continue joint work on strengthening 
cooperation in the areas of trade, production, energy, transport, investment, finance, agriculture, custom, telecommunication, digitalization, and artificial intelligence. Special in this uh, meeting was adopted the program of multilateral cooperation, trade economy cooperation of SEO member state till 2035. So the SEO has become an optimal platform for discussion of topical issues on the international agenda by the state that make up the heart of the Euro-Asian continent and a reliable partner of the UN, which leads regional diplomacy and contributes to solving the most pressing problems of security and sustainable development. As it was mentioned in the letter, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of United Nations to the Secretary General of ASEO. Undoubtedly, the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic has proved to be an un uh, unprecedented challenge, not only for individual countries, but also for interstate institution as a whole. I would like to note that in this difficult time, the SEO has demonstrated its potential as an effective platform for combating sudden epidemiological risk, which has received uh, the highest international recognition, in particular from UN Secretary General, our colleagues from ASEAN, uh, the European Union, OECE, and League Arab States. Our countries have quickly realized that no state will be able to ensure epidemiological safety by suppressing coronavirus only on its own territory as long as a disease spreads widely among its neighbors. During the acute period of the pandemic, they showed a high degree of solidarity by giving each other moral and political support. There was an uh, intensive exchange of epidemiological and organizational experience and financial, economic, and food aid was provided to the members of the organization most affected by the virus. At the forthcoming SEO summit to be held on November 10, uh, in a video format, it is planned to approve a comprehensive action plan to combat epidemics which provides for joint research development of vaccines and effective disease treatment matters. Given the sharp decline in the world economy caused by the pandemic, which will be the deepest since World uh, War II, the most important task is to develop anti-crisis measures and collective actions uh, that will contribute to the further progressive development of multilateral trade, economic, investment and financial cooperation. In the near future, the leaders of our countries intend to approve the action plan for the implementation of the ACO development strategy until 2025, which includes about 150 practical measures aimed at improving the multifaceted activities of the organization in the next five years in the course of its implementation, special attention will be paid to measures aimed at economic recovery in the post-pandemic period. I believe that in the uh, future, we could rethink about synchronizing ASIO efforts in this area with other major regional association, including ASEAN. In addition, the issue of joint development of transport and logistic infrastructure, including in remote areas, remain of great importance in this context timely proposal have been made within the ACO to create a special mechanism of a, a green corridor for transit cargo transportation for the free passage of imports and export of socially important products and personal protective equipment. In the context of the pandemic, the creation of flexible system of food reserves is also being discussed with the uh, aim of practical and meaningful implementation of the provision of the ACO food security cooperation program aimed at ensuring stability of supply and market for agricultural products in the region. The coronavirus pandemic not only posed an immediate threat to life and health worldwide, 
and uh, destabilized the international economy, but also stimulated significant challenges to global and regional security. Above all, the challenges in the field of information and communication technologies have become more acute due to internet fraud and hacker attacks on government institutions and business structures. In this regard, it would be prudent to intensify uh, multilateral contacts on international information security issues at leading specialized regional platforms, including the ACO and ASEAN. I believe that the synergy of our experience in joint efforts in this area would make a significant contribution to the global discussion on uh, establishing a comprehensive list of rules, norms, and principles of responsible behavior of states in the information space within the United Nations. The current difficult social situation aggravates the risk associated with increased criminal activity, illegal migration, and human trafficking. In these circumstances, it is important to maintain a regular dialogue between uh, the relevant agencies and multilateral institutions, including through SEO regional anti-terroristic structure, in order to exchange information and deepen coordinated policies to combat terrorist threats. In this case, I would like to focus on another promising aspect of cooperation between the ACO ASEAN and our, and our uh, other uh, partners. One of the priorities of our policy should be active work with young people aimed at preventing their involvement and extremistic activities, ensuring condition for successful so socialization and realization of the creative potential of the young generation, development of intercultural and inter-civilization dialogue. We, on our uh, ACO area, we have 800 million young people in the age from 14 to 25. That's why this issue is very important for us. In this context, the ACO University is also an important mechanism, the first meeting of which was held the, this summer as it develops this institution will accumulate the most advanced distance education methods created in the ACO region, which has become very important today uh, with a uh, growing second wave of uh, coronavirus. I believe that the subsequent exchange of experience in the field of educational programs between ACO and ASEAN institutions will make a long-term constructive contribution to shaping our common space of security and sustainable development. At the same time, it would be promising to expand contacts between SEO Youth Council and specialized structures in other regions of Eurasia, including in the context of stimulating business and entrepreneurial activity of the younger generation and the positive use of their uh, natural need to study advanced digital technologies. Uh, today, uh, two year, hours before, uh, uh, in, uh, by Indian side, uh, initiated first online forum of startups in Asia uh, area. Uh, 1,500 participants from 50 countries were in this forum, uh, involved in this forum. It is showing as our young generation uh, was so interested in the uh, further the activity in the digital economy. At this, I, am, I am sure that today we will have a fruitful and informative discussion. And I thank you for your attention. And uh, I will uh, gladly answer all your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, is my mic on? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you, Excellency, for that very comprehensive um, tour the horizon of e SEO activities, past, present, and future. Uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly that um, the future world order will be multipolar. And that's a good thing because multipolarity, I think, it, increases the maneuver space for all of us, increases our agency, our ability to determine our own fate. 
um, and the SEO and the S and the Eurasian continent, supercontinent, will play a huge role in the future world order. Uh, let me exercise the moderator's privilege and ask you the first question. And it's a broad question. You know, given that the future is multipolar, given all the projects in a whole variety of areas that you, that you have uh, outlined for us, how do you envisage the SCO's future trajectory, particularly in the field of security and stability? Because if our potential is to be uh, realized, we need stability. And it is quite natural in such a vast region, there will be internal tensions between within Eurasia and even between members of SEO and between and within some members of SEO. For example, recently we saw some uh, unfortunate incidents between India and China. So what is your vision about the future stabilization role of the SEO, given that, as you had mentioned, it is not a supranational organization. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I, I can say that um, SEO was established in 2001, where, where the, one of the main purpose of the founders of this organization was establishing peace and stability on this big area. It was time when Central Asian countries faced with great, great challenges and threats. Terrorist acts was, organ uh, was organized by some uh, uh, terroristic uh, extremistic organization on territory of Central Asia and uh, in uh, some territory of some other member state. And that's why it was time when uh, Central Asian countries, first of all, faced this threat on their border. We uh, witnessed it in the, after independence, the civil war in Tajikistan, for which uh, thousand lives lost these nations, unfortunately. And uh, the same the time, it was, uh, as I told, that this organization was established three months before 11 September 2001. And many leaders of our countries, uh, I remember the uh, when I worked in this time in foreign office of uh, Uzbekistan as deputy minister of foreign affairs. And, and we were, uh, in this time, uh, we applied, our leadership applied to United Nations to focus on Afghanistan, to not forget it, because after the uh, collapsing of Soviet Union, withdrawing Soviet troops, the, everyone is forget it. And Afghan territory became the place for, civil, again, the um, concentration of terroristic extremist groups and 40 years, this nation uh, was uh, lost a thousand lives of their people. So this uh, civil war destroyed their economy. And certainly this uh, country began to use it by some uh, illegal forces to, for drug trafficking and uh, for exporting terroristic ex extremistic activity. That's why uh, uh, it was uh, some urgently needed such organization for joining our efforts and that's why I can say that last 19 years after establishing this organization, the territory of SEO today, the territory of stability and security. That's why today we are more focusing on the economic development in our area. But at the same time, when this organization founded by our leaders, they focused that bilateral disputes not bring into the agenda because this organization should be, because this organization have not supranational any structure. And this is, uh, uh, organization is platform for joining efforts again, the main threats which our nation facing in this time for their security and stability. If you remember, uh, Central Asian countries after independence had many challenges besides economic undevelopment and high uh, inflation I remember in my beginning, Naiti Uzbekistan had 2000 person inflation rate. We had not currency. We used it paper, name it uh, uh, such coupon for <laughs> uh, uh, buying something in shops. Two years before it was constructed, special company form for which publish uh, printing now money in our country. That's the same time it was in other neighboring countries. It's, it was, the, we had some legacy from old time 
not uh, regulated the border issues, not the uh, delimitation and demarcation. And there were more disputes in this time. Uh, it was time when uh, mining borders, it was reality, it was history part of region. But never leaders of our countries brought this agenda on uh, these issues on the agenda of ACO. And now with a new leadership of Uzbekistan, President Shavkat Mirziyayev, he is focused on Central Asian policy as a priority of his regional policy by, uh, by compromise, reasonable compromise to find solution to all disputed issues the last decades on border issues or on uh, using transborder rivers. It was uh, Mr. Bzezinsky, I remember he predicted it will be the second Balkans or Central Asian Balkans and so on. But today, uh, as uh, President Mirziyev initiated a consultative dialogue mechanism and our regional uh, countries uh, uh, had the uh, two times such consultative meeting first in Astana and second in Tashkent. And uh, Mr. Nazarbayev now appointed as a uh, chairman of this uh, consultative council. So the example of uh, SEO uh, in Central Asian countries with the bilateral dispute in SEO is an example uh, to finding solution to bilateral disputes which have the countries in SEO. Yes, it is. As any uh, family, it will be not always everything is, uh, not everyone will be happy immediately. There will be some disputes will be, but solution, it will be found by uh, dialogue, by consultation. That's why one of the main principle of Shanghai's period, consultation. And last meeting in, Tash in Moscow on 10 September, there were consultation between Minister of Foreign Affairs, India and uh, China. And there were such trilateral consultation because there is such mechanism uh, created by three countries, as we say, locomotive of our organization, uh, China, Russia, and India, they have such trilateral mechanism of dialogue and consultation. And during this consultation, all these issues discussed and found way for continuous strengthening all our efforts uh, for um, uh, uh, obtaining our main goals uh, obtaining peace stability in the region and at the same time uh, providing ground for um, uh, now uh, uh, finding solution to the pandemics coronavirus and at the same time uh, uh, creating the some uh, foundation for recovery of our economy and uh, more focusing on the people well-being today that is that is way that's why uh, i think this uh, by this way is you showing its example how the countries with a different political system, with a different economic power and military, may at the same time uh, people, uh, uh, num num number of people, territory, and uh, mineral reserves, and so on, can cooperate on the base of equality, mutual respect, and mutual trust. Because no power can impose its will in framework of our organization. Always decision, any decision made on the base of consensus. Now, is in this time, I can say uh, that as your secretary, I am uh, here first my experience after working more than 20 years in foreign office and uh, in, in the, uh, as ambassador in the European countries. First time I am uh, as a secretary general, as a head of organization uh, where is represented eight countries with a different. Uh, mentality, different culture, and different way of, um, uh, or, uh, as a way of uh, um, business, if we can say, in the uh, foreign policy. But at the same time, it is uh, a secretariat, is a ground for uh, implementing Shanghai spirit, where mutual respect, mutual uh, uh, trust, and equality, we are uh, here by consultation, try to find solution to all issues. If I answer it to your question, I will be happy. <laughs> you have answered the question perfectly. I was uh, Singapore's ambassador to Russian Federation in the early 1990s during the transition period. And I had the opportunity to visit some uh, Central Asian countries then. And after I retired from the foreign service, I've been traveling actually quite intensively in Central Asia. And you have come a long way, a very long way. <laughs> 
Uh, and I'm sure uh, the SEO has played a major role in stabilizing the situation in uh, moving forward. Well, we have another question from the audience. This is from Mr. Anthony Teo, who is a board member of the Middle East Institute. Anthony, please, the floor is yours. Ambassador Norov. Ambassador Norov. Put on your video as well, Anthony. Yeah. I, I hear you. I hear yeah. you. Please. Okay. Ambassador Norov, thank you for your honoring us with your distinguished lecture. Uh, I would like to ask a question on Iran, but if I could take 10 seconds to give the perspective. I was a visiting scholar at Cambridge and I was invited to the curated Fitzwilliam exhibition on a thousand years of Persia, which has many similarities to China's a thousand years. And last week an MEI did a working paper on the 25 year China-Iran Comprehensive Strategic Pact. And if the pivot, as our chairman says, is in Central Asia, then the pivot has China on the one end and Iran on the other. The question is, in your helm, under your time, would Iran be the ninth member of SEO? Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, Iran from 2005 is observer state in ACO. And uh, uh, the, during these years, Iran is contributing to ACO uh, development and uh, contributing for uh, establishing peace stability in the, our region. And uh, Iran uh, as a, a, a geographic location of Iran now provide for Central Asian member state of SEO transit routes to the uh, world seaports, to uh, Charbahar or uh, um, Bandar Abbas, and at the same time, territory of Iran use it for transit, for transporting goods to European countries, uh, of Central Asian countries, not today, not only for Central, but to China and other countries. Over the eight, 19 years of its existence, SEO has acquired many friends and partners, established institutions of observers and dialogue of partners, signed documents on cooperation with the major international uh, bodies. Over the uh, last five years, the organization has expanded consistent, uh, considerably. In 2000, as I said, 17 India and Pakistan uh, became full member. Uh, and uh, in 2015, uh, Belarus became the observer, Cambodia and Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Nepal became the dialogue of partners of, of our organization. And uh, the member states believe that effective response to the in, uh, challenges in the field of security and stability in the uh, active development of economic and humanitarian cooperation in the ACO region can only be achieved by combining efforts on a regional scale. The ACO countries are actively developing trade and economic cooperation with the Iran and have uh, far reaching plans to build infrastructure projects, as I told you, in order to further deepen ties between the ACO and ACO observer states and dialogue partners. Last May, in the meeting of ACO, foreign ministers in Bishkek, a road map for development of cooperation between the ASIO Secretariat and Observer and Dialogue Partners was adopted. The ASIO Secretariat works with the ASIO Dialogue Partners in the Observer States, uh, including Iran, to implement this document. The issue of Iran's full membership, along with application from other countries, is Consider it in accordance with the established procedure of the organization. All, as I told you, all decisions made on the basis of consensus. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, today, Iran is good partner and strategic partner for uh, many uh, SEO member states. Iran is, uh, as I told you, contributing uh, positively in security stability in the region. And, um, uh, and uh, Iran is participating in many of our dialogue mechanisms. And at uh, the same time, uh, after the joining India and Pakistan, it is 
only uh, three years as they joined to us yeah. and they began fully uh, to, to write their full membership as I came growing the activity only last years because nevertheless, I told you 1,400 documents adopted in, in framework of our organization by some other regulations and our some uh, document procedures, it is uh, this, they should implement these uh, documents in their activity. They should uh, adjust this document. And, but it is not easy. We have more than 40 mechanism of cooperation, expert meetings, and at the same time, ministerial meetings, business council, uh, youth council. And uh, for example, on the recently India and Pakistan, the youth organization became the member of this youth council of our organization. For example, we have University of SEO, not yet two countries became the members of University of SEO. It is demanded time. So it is big uh, new experience for us when we can uh, have two such big uh, countries as the members of SEO. Certainly, but joining India and Pakistan, our organization became transcontinental and our potential is growing and capability is growing. But at the same time, it, uh, it is uh, some uh, new questions for us is rising the same uh, for resolving in this area. That's why it is time for adaptation to members, but nevertheless, it is, uh, for example, the, our uh, Russian partners in the last ministerial meeting, they said it is time for rising members of SEO and I think it, uh, if uh, there will be such decision by member states, when they can think that it is time to uh, 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 accept new member states, it will come time and for Iran or for Belarus or Mongolia and Afghanistan, the same, they would like to be the same uh, member states. But uh, nevertheless, to their first task, uh, I think for Afghanistan and SEO together, obtaining peace stability in this country. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Well, all regional organizations face this dilemma between expansion and consolidation. So um, I have another question from one of our researchers, Alex. Alex, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much, Bilahari. I'm just waiting that uh, they set up my, uh, allow me to, to use the camera. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, okay, if the camera is not working, uh, Ask a question first. okay, first. sure. Uh, oh, perfect. We are in. So, Secretary General Norov, thank you very much uh, for your informative and, and frank exposition. Uh, I'm looking at the election in the US. No matter what is going to happen in November, US and China are bent uh, on a decoupling path. Uh, in which way do you think that this US China friction? is going to affect the SEO. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, China-American relation are one of the const constructs of the modern world order. It is clear for everyone. Over the past 40 years, through the joint efforts of uh, several generations of two nations, China-American relation have achieved great results in all areas. Bilateral uh, trade has grown more than 250 times. China is one of the most important export markets for the US. Various countries are permanent members of the UN Security Council and play an important role in maintaining international peace and security. In the face of the greatest global changes in last 100 years and many new threats and challenges the international community needs close cooperation and active collaboration between China and the United States to address the most pressing issues. At the, as for China-US relation, I would like to note that the Chinese government has recently repeatedly stated that Beijing is always ready to cooperate with Washington in spirit of refraining from confrontation mutual respect and cooperation in building harmonious, joint and stable bilateral relation. I believe that the people of China and the US will find the way to peaceful coexistence and mutual benefit. This will not only 
have a positive impact on promoting the interests of the two great powers, but uh, will also help maintain peace, stability, and sustainable development throughout the world, including SEO region. The SEO remains committed to friendship and mutually beneficial cooperation with various countries of the world, as well as with the international organization. We hope that interstate relations, including China-American relation, can develop on the basis of multilateralism, equality, friendship, mutual benefit, and cooperation with the aim of building a community with shared future of mankind, which is proposed by Chinese leader. In the time of coronavirus, it became clear that the world is interconnected uh, and all countries, big or small, uh, can be dependent from each other. So uh, you cannot isolate yourself from the some, uh, threats as a virus which is spread over the world. And that's why I, I think these uh, uh, two countries play important role in uh, our uh, world uh, challenges which facing our world today. And uh, certainly all SEO member states only supporting this good partnership. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Secretary General. Lady from Kazakhstan, Inka Atkuzina, who is studying here in Singapore at the Lee Kuan Yew School. Inka, please, the floor is yours. Turn on your video and uh, microphone. Hello. Uh, thank you for giving me a floor. Здравствуйте, господин Норов. Очень приятно. Спасибо за ваш сегодняшний за вашу лекцию. Uh, I have a question um, about the, uh, you mentioned that there should be more opportunities uh, for the regions, for young people from different regions to cooperate, uh, including the universities. So my question is, uh, what are the prospects for uh, cooperation between academic institutions and um, other educational institutions between the countries of ASEAN and Shanghai Cooperation Organization? And uh, what do you think are the best initiatives uh, for the youth to engage with each other from these regions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Здравствуйте. Я очень рад, что представители нашего региона могут мне задать вопрос. Yeah. Thank you very much for questions. And uh, certainly, as I told in my statement before, that uh, ASIO area unite 800 million of our young generation from 15 and uh, uh, till 25 years. And uh, what in the time of pandemic, the, in over the world, 1.2 billion youth were, and more maybe were isolated. And uh, this, as it was mentioned, uh, it, this generation face, uh, faced the big challenge for their uh, education, for their uh, pros uh, future prosperity and their uh, many young people who finish should finish uh, this uh, their high educational institution began their jobs was unemployed till today. It is big challenge certainly. And the uh, SEO, as we as mentioned it from the beginning, faced the uh, uh, some activity from terroristic, extremistic, and separatistic organization to involve young people in their activity. In the time of uh, uh, transition time for Central Asia. We face it, a thousand, thousand young people were involved in such activity. That's why they are, were, were not solution of this uh, involvement of young people by uh, uh, enforcement or by police actions. It is needed education. That's why our countries uh, uh, focus it on the joining efforts for creation condition for young people for uh, uh, obtaining the high education and education in the, uh, in the speciality, which is now big in demand in the market. It is uh, certainly uh, education in field of uh, digital uh, IT. It became ma many, and that's why in 2018 in Sindao Summit was adopted appeal of our leaders to young generation and special program of implementation of this appeal was adopted in accordance with this our Council of Youth implementing the programs and activity for directing attention of our young people 
to right way for uh, creating a condition for um, a, a partnership and for a startup. As I mentioned today, the Indian side began this first take initiative, but at the same time last year, our uh, in the meeting of head of governments in Tashkent, the prime minister of uh, China, Mr. Li Keqiang, proposed a Chinese initiative to implement in Asia area international use business incubator. So uh, it is uh, certainly use needed support. We know that in the China, in ASEAN region, the same adopted the program, program uh, for supporting the business for young entrepreneurs. So uh, uh, we can join efforts. For example, the ASEAN program, Digital ASEAN, it is uh, where more than 20 companies, big powers, companies in the private companies in IT and digital economy join the efforts for educating, uh, for rising computer education, and at the same time supporting more than 10,000 young uh, people uh, for uh, their business in the digital uh, area, in digital economy. It is great. And uh, that's why uh, as a digital ICM, the plan implementing this program will allow ASEAN next decades to uh, rise the GDP $1 trillion. That is why our, uh, we are uh, uh, proposing, Secretariat of SEO, prepare some conception we, uh, ho we had the intention to uh, organize some conference in Chunsin. It is a city which have good partnership with uh, Singapore. And there was last year, I met the Minister of Economy of Singapore. We talked about it. They are, uh, they are uh, smart China exports, such as uh, in IT, in digital uh, telecommunication and the big data, artificial intelligence. It, it was uh, directed this uh, exhibition and Chunxin became some Chinese center for artificial intelligence and implementation. It's for uh, practical implementation. And we plan to organize this conference dig in the digital uh, uh, potential of two SHH, two organization in developing digital economy. If we can unite our common efforts, we can achieve a big. Uh, as a World Economic Forum uh, in Davos two years before, published some uh, information uh, by Pragno of prognosis that in 2030, 10 leading world economies uh, will have 190 trillion US dollar. They will uh, the amount 190 tr trillion US dollar they will achieve. But more than 60%, uh, it will be SEO member states, three leading countries economy. It is China, India, and Russia. The same ASEAN member states like Indonesia, Singapore, and others is gross. And so uh, now it is clear, which, uh, for example, Mr. Macron in his last uh, mid, uh, uh, participation in last year in the Shanghai Chinese import exhibition, he, in his statement, I was, I hear him, he made second time the statement that the world economy um, uh, trend is moving from west to the east. So to this uh, uh, big uh, organization like uh, SEO and ASEAN, which covering more part of every Asian continent, will be a center of economic, next center of economic, uh, world economic growth. That's why by engaging our young generation, our young part uh, partner, uh, partners in the uh, creating common business in digital economy, digitalization, the pandemics show it as a, a sp speeded digitalization. So uh, if we, uh, now I am in China, I had meeting with Jack Ma, I told him in Chunxin, I said, okay, look, we have 800 million young people, your icon for uh, yours, not only in China, all over the world, and your support will be important for us to redirect attention in some uh, countries, in Middle East and some other, and 80% of young people spending their time in social networks, uh, which uh, is not always very positive content have, but it is more important to redirect attention of our use, your, your sp uh, generation to properly, to cooperate in the common business, cooperate in cultural uh, uh, exchange, and at the same time in tourism, uh, among our young youth tourism, it is important. And our Youth Council has such special program, Moscow Youth Council, our Russian 
uh, you know, partners proposed such tourist card of use, use tourist card. It will allow to use to have some uh, free of charge uh, uh, service in the visiting touristic center. So it is a lot education. You have, we have University of SEO. ASEAN have such institution. So uh, I, we now try to establish partnership between two this uh, association of high educational institution to create common program. First of all, in the field of digital economy, the same time to create some common platform uh, for distance education between our countries and uh, our SEO countries educational system have the high priority and high level. And I think it will be in the interest of all our countries and organizations. Thank you. Yeah. Well. Sorry, uh, we have a question here from the deputy director of the CAREC Institute, CAREC being the Central Asian Regional Economic Co Cooperation, Mr. Iskander Abdullayev. Iskander, if you can hear me, why don't you turn on your microphone and ask your question, microphone and, and video and ask your question. Hello, Iskander. Okay, I'll read out his question then. If um, His question is, Ambassador Norov, thank you for your ex excellent presentation of SEO. Economic cooperation is one of the angles of SEO these days. Can you please uh, further share plans of SEO's economic cooperation activities? Uh, as uh, certainly uh, when uh, I came to office, uh, when I began my jobs as a secretary general, uh, first of all, I look into the number of agreements which we adopted in framework of our organization. The majority of them, more than 50 percent, it is directed to security stability. It was real and it is uh, needed in the, from the beginning of creation of organization to join our efforts against fighting these threats. But now, as I told you, uh, the uh, last 19 years, SEO area became the area of peace and stability. Economic cooperation now is one of the priority. And that's why in the uh, 2000, 15, it was adopted a strategy of development of SEO till 2025, where is outlined the importance in multilateral trade economy cooperation. And uh, first of all, to uh, develop uh, and uh, implement the multilateral investment projects in our countries to use this great potential of our countries. And the same time, the transport communication as a one of priority construction, the transport multi, uh, uh, multifaceted such logistics centers in our countries, and the same time to grow the trade uh, turnover between our countries. So uh, the, the, now this level of trade turnover between our countries not satisfying our people, uh, our member states. That's why new uh, uh, and in a summit coming summit on 10 um, uh, November will be adopted by leaders uh, this program of uh, implementing this strategy till 2025 till 2000 next such program and it is directed but there is more focusing now to uh, rising the efficiency of cooperation between our member states in field of economy and trade and now is focused for uh, such mechanism of financial mechanism of cooperation. We are focusing our efforts. Now is, we are uh, talking about um, creating some platform for using our national currencies in trade to now between our countries. And at uh, the same time, for trade economic cooperation, we have the Business Council, we have the Interbank uh, uh, Association or Interbank uh, uh, yeah, Unity. And uh, they, uh, in framework of these two institutions, there is going discussion between our uh, business community for uh, cooperation, economic cooperation, uh, trade, investment, and uh, transport, and at the same time, uh, joint uh, implement or joint project. And uh, at the same time, we have the mechanism of ministerial mechanism, several which is focused 
on uh, trade economic development. Tomorrow, we will have two such meetings, mini meeting of ministries for economy, foreign economic relations and investments. The same uh, second one will be a meeting of ministers of transport. So there, all the force is focused how to develop our trade economic cooperation, how to use for benefit of all our countries, the potential which have our uh, uh, countries and uh, certainly three uh, countries as uh, uh, China, India and uh, uh, Russia is as a big powers, economically big powers, and they have the great potential for uh, such uh, cooperation, rising the attractiveness of in, uh, SEO for investment. For example, uh, our trade turnover, foreign trade turnover of our countries last year was 6.3 trillion, but uh, GDP of our all member states was last year 22.5% uh, of world GDP or 19 trillion US dollar. And some expert, it is estimated that in 2035, 2040, it will be uh, perhaps 40% uh, portion of world GDP. And at the same time, we are now more, more focusing on inter-regional cooperation. And uh, the next week, we plan to organize a, a, a forum of, inter, uh, forum of uh, regions of SEO. It will be some platform for direct cooperation between our regions to avoid any uh, some uh, uh, losing the time for uh, uh, through ministerial contact, but directly to regional level, it will help to us to raise such group. But now is uh, certainly digitalization became now important area of our cooperation. Last year in the Bishkek summit was adopted conception on the cooperation of SEO member state in field of digitalization and trade economic development. Now we are preparing the uh, a plan of action for implementation of this concept. And now uh, pandemia only uh, uh, forced digitalization process in our countries. And uh, we are more now uh, in each of our country now developing the national program and strategy for developing the digital economy. And uh, we, uh, uh, as I told, uh, now more focusing on this area. And in this area, I think, will be uh, promising in this. But for example, uh, now is for uh, strengthening such trade economy cooperation. The, our member states have several initiatives. Recently, we, uh, uh, not last year, in Sindao, Mr. Xi Jinping proposed establishing in Sindao regional uh, trade economic demonstration zone of ACO and China, where will be uh, joined efforts for implementing multilateral projects for benefits of all countries. Uh, such initiative now, uh, other our member states, and uh, I believe that uh, by uh, focusing the all efforts on this area, we can obtain uh, more at, uh, the benefit from this cooperation. And economic, as I told you, economic cooperation is wide priority. Tourism in this uh, same area, the service tourism, <coughs> for example, uh, yeah, our countries have big potential is as a half of population of the world and perhaps 150 uh, um, world uh, heritage, cultural heritage in UNESCO list uh, cultural heritage, it is from SEO member state. We are last year, Secretary had initiated some conception, eight wonders of SEO for, in, uh, for rising touristic potential of our countries, for rising the tourism exchange between our member states. That's why in this area, we see the more potential. And that's why I think this potential we can use for benefits of our two regions, Asia region and ASEAN. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have another question from one of the researchers in the Middle East Institute. Uh, Asif, the floor is yours. Turn on your video uh, and microphone, ask your question. Thank, thank you, Honorable Chair, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, your Excellency, uh, you have mentioned uh, uh, in your uh, speech that uh, SEO is uh, not a military or political bloc. But uh, we see that uh, in the media, they normally label it as the NATO of the East. 
So I would like to know your view on that and uh, what does SEO mean for global security? Thank you. Thank you for your question. It is not you first who asking me about this. <laughs> uh, I can say it almost immediately after the establishment of the SEO in 2001, the international community primarily represented by some Western experts community and the media uh, became concerned about the goals and objectives of the uh, new organization throughout this time, various assumptions uh, and uh, have uh, periodically uh, emerged that one of the SEO's main mission is a military and political confrontation with NATO, NATO in the East or its transformation into NATO in the, the East. This is issue is becoming in, in, even more relevant in the current difficult times at the time when the international situation is uh, complicated and the confrontation between the major powers that are members of certain world political alliances and military political blocs is, is intensifying. At the same time, the answer to this question is very clear and concrete. Asia is not an ally for of NATO in the East. We cannot talk about such transformation by definition. As I told you, we have not any supranational structure. If you're looking to the NATO, NATO has their supranational structure, NATO Secretariat. At the same time, they have United Military Forces. They, um, uh, they have the, some charter of this NATO uh, as a military bloc, political military bloc, and they uh, participating, they are military forces participating in some uh, regions. It's common, uh, as you can see, in the Afghanistan is NATO, in the Balkans there were NATO missions, or in the Middle East, the NATO missions. Uh, ASEO member states have cooperation in military field. It is between our ministers of defense we are organizing each year some exercises. Peace mission, it is named. It is anti-terroristic exercises, where, for example, last year participating India and Pakistan military their forces participating because uh, it is needed uh, today uh, in terroristic ac activities, as we could witness in Syria. They have the, such uh, military capacity terroristic organization. They are, they are, uh, you cannot uh, fight against them by poli only by police forces. It is needed some uh, military unity uh, for fighting against such. That's why we are uh, organizing such uh, exercises to make clear that our forces is capable to challenge such threat if they will, will face our uh, member states. That's why uh, uh, to say only on the base of one of these exercises, which we organizing uh, every year, uh, with a restricted number of military persons and uh, ammunition, uh, to say that uh, ASIO is uh, uh, like anti uh, like anti NATO, like NATO in East. There is, as I told you, there is not such any uh, uh, reason to say about it. As I told you, we have not the same mechanism of uh, military cooperation as NATO have now recently in Europe. I worked as an ambassador of Uzbekistan, head of missions of Uzbekistan two times in Brussels, uh, mission head of me in NATO. And I know very well the, uh, the structure of NATO, it, uh, function, its goals and its functions and how it operates. That's why it is different, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, we are running out of time, but I see my friend from Japan, Shikata Tatsuo, has raised his hand, so I will give him the last question. Uh, Shikata-san, uh, floor is yours. Turn on your video and ask your question. Okay, thank you very much for giving me the last floor. Let me ask about the BLI. I understand the SEO welcomes BLI, but among uh, SEO members, some countries welcome SCI, uh, BLI, but others do not necessarily welcome uh, BLI. Under such circumstances, if and how SEO is going to support BLI. Thank you very much.
Excuse me, can you repeat your questions? It is some uh, maybe technical, some uh, difficulties we had to face it, not here. Today. How will the SCO support the BRI? Because some members uh, have rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. reservations about it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. This is initiative uh, announced by President of China, Mrs. Xi Jinping, in 2013 in Astana, Nazarbayev University, as I remember, yes. first here uh, for, as an initiative for with the purpose of reviving the Great Silk Road. Certainly, this initiative, welcomed by uh, Central Asian countries in this time and Russia, and uh, these projects. Uh, uh, in the, uh, this our countries, these member states of our countries, uh, consider in their interest, and that's why SEO uh, can play as a platform for implementation of this initiative, because uh, for sex, uh, obtaining success of this uh, initiative for implementing, because it directed for developing infrastructure and industrial capacity, all countries along this one belt, one road. And uh, if we're looking uh, to this uh, implementation, it is certainly, first of all, it is needed security stability. And SEO is, in this case, playing important role. But at the same time, SEO member states uniting the countries, mostly who uh, developed it during centuries along one belt, one road. And that's why the old countries, uh, the perhaps all countries, as I mentioned, Russia, uh, Central Asian countries, Pakistan now, supporting this and they consider that cohesion, the uh, national economic uh, development strategies with the one belt, one road will help to them to develop their infrastructure to, the, to rise their potential for mutual uh, beneficial cooperation. At the same time, Russian president and uh, Vladimir Putin and the Chinese president, Mr. Xi Jinping, uh, they made such agreement concluded for cohesion of a Eurasian economic uh, union with a one belt, one road. This plot, uh, cohesion certainly will uh, play the ground for uh, developing uh, uh, such important transport routes through Russian territory and the same time through North Sea. It is uh, routes today became more attractive with a growing transport uh, delivery for example, only for six uh, from January till this, uh, October, only through Russian border, the transporting of uh, containers, uh, uh, trains, rise at 53% in compare with last year. So uh, Central Asian countries consider that construction the railroad from Uzbekistan through Kyrgyzstan to China will be one of important part of this uh, project, one belt, one road project. Uh, and uh, because it will help to Central Asian countries to avoid geographical isolation. For example, uh, uh, Uzbekistan, it is double land locked countries and our neighbors, all our neighbors, locked countries. In the world, only two countries double land like locked. It is Liechtenstein, which is benefiting because it is in the center of Europe with a developed transport infrastructure. And, the, the, and second is Uzbekistan. And, some uh, goods, when we exporting some goods, the price of transport cost is coming up to 60%, it's up to 60, 70%. That's why one bell, one road initiative, which is focused on developing transport infrastructure is uh, for our uh, the central benefits of our countries, Central Asian countries. In other, we now, our countries is actively now uh, using the transport routes uh, uh, and uh, our combination of tracks with the uh, trains. We have, uh, uh, for example, ACO member states have 300,000 more uh, kilometers of railroads. It is biggest uh, uh, railroads in the world uh, in, or among other, in compared with other regions. At the same time, as uh, last year, European Commission mentioned it, only for delivering goods, from China to Europe and back, only 1.8% transported by railroad. Nevertheless, from 2010, 40 times rise the transports of the containers from China to Europe and back. And the same time, perhaps 
25 million containers transported to Europe, to Middle East, to South East Asia, and to China. And by the same time, only 1.8. That's why the now is uh, pandemic only uh, showed importance of the railroad for delivering goods timely, safely, and surely. And that's why we are now uh, focusing on developing cooperation between our member states and the, all our member states in framework, uh, no, maybe not all, the, 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 what the countries which I mentioned, it is uh, Russia, Central Asian countries, Pakistan, and uh, they are now uh, cooperating with a special financial institution initiated by China for implementing the projects along One Belt, One Road, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, and at the same time, Silk Road, Silk, uh, Foundation of Silk Road, and this financial institution uh, is helping to implement this project. So uh, uh, we see that a time uh, of uh, come for reviving this great Silk Road uh, history, because uh, I am from Bukhara. This is historical city on, as a, one of the centers. Uzbekistan territory now has several such big cities as Samarkand, Hiva, Termes, Tashkent, this is, and the same in our regional neighboring countries. It was in 12th century, 10th century, this Bukhara at one was one of the center, the scientific, uh, uh, cultural center and uh, educational center, Avicenna. It is the name of great medicine. Well, now and in Europe, it is Abu Ali bin Sina. He was, I, I was born six kilometers from his village where he was born. We are proud of that, but it was all in great Silk Road time, all algorithm. Many think that algorithm, which we're now using in so, as a software for digital economy to intelligence, artificial intelligence, it is Latin words. <laughs> and I work at in Europe as ambassador. I, I educated my colleagues from Europe that it is not Latin word. It is a name of great uh, scientist, Al Harizmi from Horizon Ridge. And the same in 10th century, he found and wrote algebra book. And he began to use number zero. He studied from India, this experience, and began to use with Arabic number. He joined. And uh, this combination today, zero, one, zero, one, uh, made the ground for algorithm for the success of developed countries in software and digital economy. This is uh, why uh, it is important. This is why Central Asian countries have the memory, historical memory of benefit from the Silk, Great Silk Road. That's why we uh, consider this implementation of One Belt, One Road, full implementation of its goals will create the ground for our prosperity. I was ambassador in Holland the same and I visited Amsterdam. Now it is a great city of Europe and the world seaports where, but in 12th century, it was small the village when in 12th century, our cities on Silk Road developed this way. Uh, today from One Belt, One Road benefiting not only SEO member states, but European Union countries, many countries from European Union is member of uh, this One Belt, One Road, Middle Eastern countries, and we hope that uh, this uh, um, uh, SEO can further play important role in implementation of these projects for benefits uh, of our countries. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Norov. Uh, I know many of you have still got questions, but we are run out of time. Ambassador Norov has been extremely generous with his time and he must be very tired by now. So we should not abuse his generosity any further. Yeah. So just let me Thank you once again, Ambassador. Yeah. Uh, I hope that uh, ties between ASEAN and the SEO will, will grow. Yeah. And I hope that one day, in not too distant future, I have a chance to welcome you in person in Singapore. Yeah. I yeah, was thank supposed you. to go to Tashkent in June, but you know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Kaosikan, for your such contribution, for your initiative because it is an uh, initiative very timely. It is important. We think that to our region, uh, SEO and ASEAN have great potential for contributing to world economic development and world prosperity and implementing on the whole uh, world area, uh, the agenda 2030. And we can contribute for uh, um, eradication of poverty 
as a China showed example for during short time, 800 million take from poetry and now contribute helping to other countries. That's why we are ready. ASEAN uh, Secretariat SEO is ready to cooperate with your institution, to cooperate with ASEAN member states and ASEAN secretary. We are, have good relationship with the secretary general of ASEAN. That's why we will, uh, we hope that we can continue such uh, uh, consultation or such exchange of view and uh, information by uh, digital. So you see pandemic at such influence, we became we, we fastly connect to each other, possible to connect each other very fastly. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I wish I could connect in person. I think all time, I, I was very interested to hear that you were uh, from Bukhara. Yeah, yeah. I've been to Bukhara once in my life. That was in 1975. That's ah. quite a time ago. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Thank you again. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you all for all right. Thank in. you all participants. Participate in the yeah. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye.